Hello and welcome to Sports Star Extras once again. I am Ayan Acharya uh, here to review the second day's play from Manchester, where Pakistan have the test by the scruff of the neck at the moment, thanks to uh, Shan Masood's 156 and inspiring bowling performances from Mohammad Abbas and Shaheen Afridi. Uh, to discuss more, uh, we have joining us from Bangalore, Ashwin. Good evening, Ashwin. Hi, Ayan. How's it going? Good, good. Right, Ashwin, uh, so very similar to day one, uh, as far as the script goes, England off to a great start with uh, Jimmy Anderson picking up the wicket of Babar Azam in the very first over. Uh, but, well, that was perhaps the only silver lining for England today. Yeah, it got to praise the uh, Pakistan batting uh, today. I think yeah. uh, they exceeded expectations again uh, for the second consecutive day. Uh, look, I mean, it was always uh, down to whether the Pakistan batting will be able to deliver because we know that they have a world-class uh, bowling lineup. Uh, and uh, my God, they delivered today. I mean, uh, Shan Masood, the third consecutive uh, test century. What a knock. What an unbelievable knock. Uh, took his time uh, early on. And then later, when he was batting with the tail, he showed that he has uh, some huge shots as well. He started opening up right. hitting a few huge sixes, especially yeah. at Don Best. He looks yeah. like a complete batsman. And the key, I think, to his batting is he picks up the length very early. Uh, anything right. short, he's right back. He flicks it, yeah. he pulls it, he hooks it. And if it's full, he's there on the front foot. He looks like a terrific batsman. And I think uh, he's put uh, Pakistan in a very, very good position. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you mention uh, the fact that he sort of picked pace at the you know latter half of his uh, innings. Uh, because... Uh, I felt the highlight of his knock was the way he mixed defense and attack. Uh, he uh, gave the you know English bowlers the the respect they deserved early on. Uh, didn't uh, you know try and look to uh, break the shackles at any point for that matter, as was evident from the number of balls he took to get to 156. Uh, but uh, that that stand that he had with Shadab Khan, the 105 uh, run partnership, that was extremely crucial for Pakistan, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely crucial. Because if not for that partnership, uh, Pakistan could have been bowled out for about 200-odd. Yeah. And uh, then England would have had the uh, advantage. So, yeah. uh, fantastic partnership there. Crucial uh, partnership. And another thing about uh, Shan Masood is he looks like the perfect opening batsman. And by that, mm. I mean uh, he gives respect to the bowlers early on, yeah. takes his time. Absolutely. And when the time is right to go for the runs, yeah. He goes for it and he gets a quick run. So, perfect opening batsman. Yeah. And in, in many ways, uh, I think the partnership with Babar Azam as well uh, showed us what's so good about, uh, you know, at least the top order, what has looked good about the Pakistan top order in the last couple of days. On one hand, as we discussed earlier, we have Babar Azam uh, in out-and-out -out stroke maker who's not going to hold back if he gets the loose ball. And on the other, you have someone like Shan Masood who uh, doesn't mind you know, uh, holding back uh, so long as he's kept his wicket and then he opens up when the opportunity presents itself. So, uh, batting-wise, everything going Pakistan's way. Uh, a word on England, though, they look pretty, I mean, pretty damn flat with uh, the ball and on the field. Yeah, they did very uncharacteristic, uh, both uh, the fielding and the bowling. Uh, bowling was a little short, I'd say, uh, which is really surprising because mm. they have the winning formula. They showed it against West Indies. Uh, yeah. A little too short, allowing the batsman to go on the back foot too comfortably. Uh, and fielding was flat as well. A lot of misfields and yeah. uh, Butler wasn't great. He put down yeah, a catch yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, just um, pretty shoddy stuff uh, right yeah. through the day from England. Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, especially now that he brought up Butler. Uh, it's, it's just, he's just making things difficult for himself, isn't he? I mean, you've got two uh, men waiting in the ranks in Johnny Bairstow and Ben folks itching to get out there. And Butler is not helping his cause with all those gaps behind the stumps. Yeah, I mean, you could say he was lucky to get all three matches uh, to play yeah. in the West Indies series. And he wasn't outstanding there. Uh, so, I think uh, patience is very thin for the England selectors uh, yeah. with Butler. Yeah. Like you said, they have uh, Bairstow and Fawkes uh, available. So, uh, I don't know if uh, they can continue with Butler for too much longer. He just doesn't look... Yeah. Confident yeah. with the gloves or with the bat. It's really tough to right. uh, keep your place in this England team uh, if you're in this poor form. Right, right. And, and well, the only you know, a good sign for Butler is he's got a second opportunity to sort of redeem himself. 
I'm, I'm sure, you know, the English management will be hoping that he turns things around with the bat in the company of Ollie Pope, who's once again looked good. We saw that in the third test match in Manchester when he walked out to bat in a similar situation, uh, looked positive, played his shots. Once again, he did, you know, the exact same thing. And just how important will this stand be for England on day three? Yeah, it could be the difference between uh, defeat and uh, draw or a win. Uh, and because uh, uh, this, I mean, England are already in trouble. So, they need something yeah. big from Butler and uh, Pope. One thing uh, that stands out about Pope's batting that we saw in the West Indies series as well, he's a busy player. He doesn't yeah, like busy. to get bogged down. Right. At a minimum, he's looking for the quick singles. A bit edgy at the crease. Um, you know, uh, sort of gets a few edges, uh, dicey edges to third fan. But overall, a busy player keeps the runs coming, doesn't allow the uh, bowlers to build pressure. So, yeah, a lot riding on him and Butler tomorrow. Correct. And this will be a, a test of character for the English middle order as well. We, we had been discussing during the West Indies series uh, too that uh, the batting, although they have, uh, you know, uh, young guys like uh, Rory Buns and Dom Sibley at the top, but they still rely heavily on Joe Root and Ben Stokes. And both those guys are now gone cheaply. So, how, how they, how both uh, Pope and Butler and the batsmen to follow, uh, who knows, maybe Stuart Broad might again come up with a great tear guard. But uh, Pakistan at the moment do have the upper hand going into day three. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the fast bowling attack that they have was uh, incredibly good today. Uh, Afridi, Abbas, uh, and even the leg spinner Yasir Shah, fantastic. I mean, uh, Afridi and Abbas destroyed the top order. That uh, yeah. ball to get uh, Ben Stokes was unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, that was yeah. one of the best deliveries you can bowl as a fast bowler. Top of off, moving slightly away, especially with Stokes standing well outside his crease to counter yeah. the swing. I mean, uh, magical delivery. And Rory Burns, uh, Ayan, we have to make a mention. There is something off with yeah. his uh, technique because you see that he brings his bat uh, almost from point. I mean, we know that uh, all coaches say you got to bring the bat in straight. I mean, if you bring the bat uh, all the way down from point, uh, when you miss the line, when you're playing across the line to a straight ball, you are plum LBW. And we keep uh, seeing this uh, with him even during the West Indies series. Uh, Gabriel got him out a couple of times. I know uh, he's an international batsman. It's very tough to change basic technique uh, at this point in his career. But uh, I think uh, a lot of the opposition fast bowlers will be looking at him as a pretty um, uh, easy LBW candidate as long as they keep it on the stumps and get it to move around a little bit. Yeah, which is exactly what the Pakistan bowlers have done so far and would be hoping they continue to do uh, when uh, day three gets underway. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, plenty to ponder for England. All smiles in the Pakistan dressing room. Uh, all things said and then looks like uh, you know, uh, Pakistan are primed for a 1-0 lead in the series. That said, let's not forget uh, Pakistan, volatile, volatile Pakistan. So, you never know how things could uh, take the turn. You still have Stuart Broad waiting in the ranks, uh, who proved to be the difference against West Indies, whether he can do the same. Hey, come on, uh, man. England are in trouble if they're uh, hoping uh, or placing their bets on Stuart Broad coming good with runs. Come on, man. I, I, yeah, I, honestly, I think at this stage… Oh, Joe man, Root, it's a lost cause at that point. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah, I surely hope so because we discussed at the start of the series that, you know, Pakistan winning a test match, Pakistan winning a series in England is great for Pakistan cricket and world cricket. West Indies yeah. uh, did put up a fight, but Pakistan have started on a very, very positive note. Hopefully, they'll be able to carry it all the way. Uh, so, yeah, that'd be all from our side. Thank you so much, Ashwin, for joining us once again. 